Well, when I started refereeing, I, I really uh, was just looking for something to do in the winter months to stay in shape. But after a while, I began to realize that I really enjoyed it. And that was something that I could contribute back to the sport. I'd been coaching for years here at Catholic Central, and it was a natural extension to get into another area, and officiating was the one for me. And all I tend to do. Well, the officials are, are really there to facilitate the game for the players. The players practice, uh, they, they want to show uh, what they can do in a live game setting, and our job is to make sure the game is safe and fair. So what we really bring is, is a, a support role for, for the players, and a lot of times people think that, it, uh, that we're there to, to uh, interrupt the game. We'd like the players to be able to play with the least amount of interruptions, but the game has to stay fair and safe. Well, I officiated over 2,000 basketball games, so it's hard to pick one single game out. I've been involved in, in a lot of uh, real close competitive games. But in my second year of refing, I was uh, able to uh, referee a, a game in Foremost, which is a small community in southeastern Alberta. Foremost and Sterling were playing to uh, decide who would go to provincials. Um, when we got to the school an hour before the game, the gym was half full when we came out uh, 15 minutes before the game. Um, it was standing room only, there were people crowded everywhere. Uh, it was a close competitive game, it went to overtime. Uh, when the score was 123 to 120, uh, foremost called timeout, they had time for one last possession. Uh, my partner at the time said to me, if the shot doesn't go in, let's just get out the door, we won't worry about signing the score sheet. Uh, uh, foremost missed. Um, when we left the gym, kind of on the run, we got outside and my ears were ringing like I'd been in a rock concert. I'd never been in a facility that loud and I've never been in a facility that loud since. I've refereed games um, in big arenas, I've refereed national championship games, but that memory st sticks out. It was the loudest game I've ever been involved with and the only time in my life my ears were ever ringing for a good reason after a game. Well, as an official, you don't really try to achieve something. Our goal is to make sure that the players on the floor have the opportunity to perform. Uh, our goal is not to be noticed by people. And so for us to achieve something, it's really um, to be unnoticed, to be anonymous. And so for me, um, the greatest compliment um, is for someone to say after the game, gee, I don't remember who refereed because there were no controversial calls, no. Um, big issues in the game. So really what we're trying to achieve is a fair opportunity and a safe opportunity for the players. And the kids that you hold in your arms. Well I'm incredibly humbled to have received this award. As I said earlier, when you're an official you crave anonymity. You don't want to be noticed by people. So to now be recognized by the ASAA in, in this way is very humbling. Uh, when I received the phone call, I was stunned. I, I honestly never thought about it. And uh, it's just a, a great um, culmination to, to my refereeing career. Well, I want to thank John and Michelle and the rest of the ASAA staff for putting on this event. It's been um, just a marvelous award to be, to be the recipient of. Uh, a lot of the referees, I, I think it's important that I thank them. People when I started refereeing, my veteran head. officials, Bob Fede, Pat Leighton, Mike Slavich, they were instrumental in my career. They really helped me out. But I, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for Keith Jorgensen, who was my mentor as an official. He saw something in me that made me um, come to realize that I could you know, excel at officiating. And without Keith, I really um, would never have accomplished anything as an official. Of the people I refed with that were my contemporaries, uh, my best friend in refereeing is Richard Thompson. Uh, Richard is the guy that uh, always was there to listen to me, good sounding board when I uh, wasn't sure uh, on the floor or off the floor. And of course, um, one of the strange parts about refereeing is when the game is over, we tend to want to move on to the next one pretty quickly. So it's pretty hard when you come home at night and you really haven't got a lot to tell your spouse about. But my wife, Karen has been absolutely um, my best support. Um, I want to thank her. I want to thank my children for um, allowing me to, to be away from home. I, I missed quite a few dinners. I, uh, I missed a few family events, um, but without my wife and my children, it, would be, uh, it wouldn't have been possible. So they're 
they're my biggest supporters and I really want to thank them.